Elise, a panel of pros who teach or coach on topic of manners. They are Biba Padron, a style maven and brand sprat strategist who coaches women entrepreneurs in the areas of marketing, networking, and etiquette. Valentina Sirisola, an architectural interior designer by trade who brought from her native Italy a refinement that carries over to her clients' lives. And Charles McPherson, a former butler and now president of Charles McPherson Associates Incorporated, training and placing butlers worldwide in the hospitality and luxury private sectors. Who could be more mannered than a butler? Biba, Valentina, Charles, Pinkies up, everyone. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Great Hi. to be here. All right, Hi. now everyone introduce yourselves. Who wants to go first? I can go first. I'm Valentina. All right, Valentina. Who's next? I, hello, everyone. First of all, it's the 8th of March. Happy Woman's Day. It ah. is International Woman's Day. It is International okay. Woman's Day. And, folks, as you know, we tape the show on Thursday, and uh, this is International Women's Day. And who do we have left? Charles. Yeah, Habiba. Charles McPherson. All right. Dude, the butler. Okay. Did the butler really do it? The butler really did. Okay. I thought so. I always thought so. <laughs> all right. Now, let me ask you all, if you folks, um, do you, I mentioned in my intro that I see a decline uh, in manners in general, um, because frank, and frankly, I ask that because I think we boomers were started that. We started by rebelling against the confinements of our parents' era, beginning with more relaxed dress. Then we added greater use of slang, which has led now to a poor use of language overall, which kind of has just a laziness about it. Then over the years, we stripped away more and more of what used to be considered proper manners to the point that today, I think, rudeness and incivility seem to have become the new chic. Am I alone in this and seeing this, or, or do you also believe the state of our manners has deteriorated, particularly for boomers? Uh, I do. I do believe that the, uh, the manners are no longer there or no longer expected to, to, to have. And everything in this casual world, world has to be just going with the flow, casual. And the casual is fine, but can't you be casually and still be mannerly? Um, yes, absolutely. Did I just say casually? Yes. <laughs> did you like, yeah, you did. But you can, can you be casual and still mannerly? Yes, yes, you can. Absolutely. Oh, and, and now, who is this speaking? I'm this sorry. is Valentina. All oh, right, Valentina. And, and Charles and Biba, how, how, what do you both think? Yeah, I think that casual, you know, the problem with casual is that, you know, in the U.S. you started casual Friday. I don't know how since how long, but it seems that now it's casual every day in some places, and uh, and I'm agree with Valentina, you can be casual, but you can still be elegant, and you can be chic, and you know, it doesn't have to be uh, over the top, but you can be casual and uh, and have a, a great look. Have a great look, but also, and, and uh, we're, we're talking about look, and that's fine, we can get onto that in, in greater depth in a minute, but I'm talking about just having manners. I, I, like, it, for example, I see people yawning and not covering their mouth when they yawn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just think that is very, very, that's very poor manners. I was raised to cover your mouth when you yawn. But, you know, they're in the car, they're... I'm sorry, but I, guys, but they're picking their nose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's disgusting. But I, I think, Terry, I think that you're absolutely right that as in society we're at a low point right now in manners. But I think that we've actually realized that we've hit rock bottom. And the importance of manners, I believe, from what I see, is actually coming back. Uh, because, for example, you know, there was just an article out about, you know, this past weekend at MIT, how they're giving, you know, all their students etiquette lessons on how to properly eat at the table and introduce themselves. And so I think that, that as a society, we, we know we've gone, the pendulum has gone too far. I mean, you know, the Victorian era, we were, you know, 100 years ago at one extreme, you know, 150 years ago, but now we've gone too far the other extreme. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is, that's human nature, the pendulum swing, yeah. go all the way right. from one to end to the other. I'm sorry, I interrupted somebody, I don't know who. Yeah, that was me, Valentina. Okay. <laughs> I was going to add that um, we think of uh, etiquette of uh, people in general, not we. People in general think about the etiquette or rules of conduct as uh, laws or as rules. But the etiquette, actually, they're having good manner. It's, um, it's a value that distinguish the human from the animals. I think that 
having um, a better etiquette in our daily life is a, a value system that seeks not to offend others and ourselves while harmonizing our daily life. Mm -hmm. So it is not a thing that only, uh, you know, so-called dandy used to have. But we need to return to that. I, I, I think you're right, and I think that the, the piece there, uh, we're going to break in just a moment, but is that, I, I and I said it in the intro, that we think it's snooty. Yeah. And I think we have to get away from the feeling that I'm being snobbish or snooty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I just speak English correctly and don't say, where are you at? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. about as bad as it gets. Yeah. Uh, or or uh, if I say, that, that is the, that's the, uh, the bell with which I... I go about my day, and people look at me like, oh, who do you think you are? That's just proper English. Yes. Uh -huh. But I think that, you know, manners, we, we have to also realize that manners are not just also to be perceived for rich people or for snobs, but manners are just the social way that we interact with each other, whether it's how you do you have breakfast, okay. you know, with your brother at the table, or how do you talk to the, to the bus driver? I agree. Work. I agree. We have to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk a whole lot more about all of this. This is excellent, folks. We will be right back. Owning or managing a business can be quite a challenge. You'll need to take advantage of every opportunity and be as competitive as possible. How about a team of experts working for you on your schedule? Allow me to introduce Link to Expert. Link to Expert is a clearinghouse of pre-qualified business consulting professionals available to you at any time, anywhere. You can sort through our directory of experts based on your targeted needs, check out the expert's qualifications, and even watch a video to test drive your candidates. From planning to to marketing, sales, legal, and so much more. We have whatever expert you need all in one place. Find someone to take your business to the next level. Save time, money, and eliminate work. Team up with Link to Expert. You can find us online at linktoexpert.com or call 888-791-7138. That's linktoexpert.com, 888-791-7138. Link to Expert, connecting executives to experts now. This is Boomer Nation. Here's your host, Terry Benincasa. We're back. I hope you folks like that music. We're back with the Behavior Police. Our panel of pros on the subject of manners. Biba Pedron, Valentina Sirasola, and Charles McPherson. Okay, well, before the break, we talked about people doing things that uh, I don't recognize as bad manners, like yawning without covering your mouth. You know, I know you spend a lot of money on that dental work, but I don't want to look at it. Um, what, what are... Um, and then we talked about the fact that people think it's a little snotty or snobbish to have good manners. Where did that come from, do you think, that people started to feel that it actually worked against them to act mannerly as opposed to it's a good thing? Anybody, any thoughts on that? Well, um, I think that having good manners, this is Valentina, having good manners is important to, to symbolize uh, our self-control, stability, and re reliability. That's what I think. But where did it come from? It came from the fact that uh, in the 60s, people wanted to liberate themselves from every little constructions of society. But today, it's happening that um, uh, it's not easy to distinguish the good manners from the costumes that we get a a accustomed to see in the street and around our uh, circle of uh, people. Um, the, um, the good manners, when someone has a good manner, becomes the next generation costumes. So if the previous generation did not have that good manners and refused everything that was happening before them again, it's, it's not easy to translate and transfer it to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So at yeah. this point now we are at that um, point that uh, we, we need to go back to it because we have recognized the damage that we have done mm -hmm. to the next generation. Okay, and you, you know, you said it, uh, I think you said it very well, Valentina, that in ult ultimately it, it, I think, is a, a reflection of one's self-respect. 
and and the yep. and the image one puts across to others. And Charles, you mentioned that uh, we took that wanting to cast off the constraints of our parents, we boomers, and took it to an extreme. I think we did. I think that also, you know, when you when you look at, at, at the history, that, you know, by the time that we got into the 60s, you know, we had gone through the two world wars, you know, the middle class was finally coming in, and there was this whole liberation of society. Okay. And so, you know, the, the manners, very strict manners we, the, where we, that we had come from were considered too bourgeoisie, and people were really uncomfortable with that. And so that really, that's when the, the, the pendulum was really swinging very quickly to, to just being who you are and, and that manners weren't considered important in society. Right. Uh, but that has changed and that, that is changing and that all started to change, you know, with the creation of wealth and Reaganomics in the 80s. And, and that has, you know, that, that's I think why the pendulum is changing again. No, we just yeah, and, and I, I, I would say that I, I'm agree with John because when you say that in the 60s, in the 70s, you know, people wanted to be liberated, and, and the problem is that they wanted that liberation that much that now we are at the point that it went too far. Yeah. And uh, and now it's both in social and business. In, in both situations, you you see people don't have the right manner, even if you go at a business meeting or something like yeah. that. It goes everywhere. And what you mentioned, Charles, at the beginning of the show that you the you, you saw on TV about MIT. Who created a, um, a program about etiquette for the for the university, and it went so far that now that a lot of university create a specific program etiquette for the students and even for the younger one, and uh, and also now we see in corporation there's a lot of more demand on corporation in order to take program etiquette and training etiquette for this stuff because they realize that you know when they send people you know to 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 meet clients or for lunch or something like that, you know people we plus with social media now. You know, people don't listen to others. They speak too loud. They huh? have a conversation and they, they check the BlackBerry and that kind of right. thing. That you, you can't do that. It's, it's really not the right education. So it's but how sad really is that? Fun. Speaking of interrupting, but how yeah. sad is that, that we have to literally have courses in schools now to teach basic oh. manner manners and etiquette? It's yeah. kind of like I think it's very sad that we boomers need public service announcements to tell us sit down with your kids at dinner. You know, well, I mean, I, this I, is but, common sense. But Terry, I don't. I respectfully don't think that it's sad that we have to have classes on it from the perspective that yes, in a perfect world, these would be would be lessons that we would learn at home with our families. But with with the world today of you know two working parents and kids in school and and all the activities, it's just not happening. And so I think, thank goodness. That as a society, that we've said, well, okay, this is something that's really missing that, that we need to do because it's how it's not about snobism and, and elitism. It's about social interaction. And so I think how grateful that there are classes to start to teach young people the value and the importance of these skills. Uh, I, I, I also yeah. remember, this is Valentin again, I also remember being, being Italian and going, ha having gone to school in Italy, I remember studying social studies, which co uh, comprised all the um, good manners that uh, all the behaviors that you should have when you are in the street, when you are in somebody's property, when you are invited to somebody's house. This was called social study. Oh, so they teach that in school in Italy? They did then. They don't anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I remember having it in elementary, middle school, and uh, halfway through the high school. Okay. So if, if, as you say, Charles, we need that uh, because it's not being taught at home, then we do need it in the schools. And uh, uh, I, I agree, it's not, definitely not being taught at home. But let's go back to the notion of why it's so important, everyone. We hit a, touched upon it briefly, that it is a matter of, of showing your own capacity, your reliability, your self-respect. Um, uh, do you all agree that that's a, a main reason for wanting to act mannerly? Because we seem to not want to do it. There is a, uh, a uh, well-known, I don't know if it's a proverb or saying that goes, kindness will give you friends, but it will also open doors in society. Who wants to be around people who are not kind or well-mannered? I don't want to have an employee in my office if it doesn't respect my uh, property, my space, my way of thinking, or my way of uh, conducting myself to towards others. It's the same thing with people who are looking for jobs, who are looking for friendship. I think manners, having good manners, again, will 
open all of these opportunities in society. I love what you're saying. Yeah. I think to add to that, you know, if you think about this, no one has ever been criticized for being polite, but yeah. everyone is always criticized for being impolite. Right. And so if for no other selfish reason alone, why you would want to have good manners and to be polite is for the lack of, of public criticism. Okay. Yeah, and, and having the right manners is, I think it's the way to stand out from the crowd because now there's not that many people who really have the right manners. So, you know, maybe people won't notice it immediately. They, they will, will notice you, you as a person. Yes. But the next time that they will need to contact somebody like the relationship or the job, or like mentioned uh, Valentina, or if you look for uh, a client, if you're a business owner, well, you will know what to call because between two people, you will definitely choose the person with the right manner. Okay. I want to say a funny episode that happens to me all the time. This is Valentina. Uh, it happens actually all the time. I've got a custom to it, but I, I don't like it. I actually hate it. Many times I have appointments with my clients at night time after their working hours because that's the way they want to meet, it, meet, meet me because on the weekend they have their kids, their family, their activities. So to do the remodeling, sometimes we meet at nighttime and they invited me at their dinner hours, but they never invite me for dinner. Hmm. So they're, so they're literally yeah. eating dinner while, while you're talking exactly. to them? Oh, gee. That's... Exactly. Do you know what that makes me feel? Wow. You no, know, yeah. can offer a glass I can't of imagine. wine. Wow, okay. very bad. Well, you know, that, that leads Valentina very nicely into my next question, and unfortunately we're running out of time. I'm going to have to have all of you back for another round. Uh, but what are some of the uh, of the lesser-known, poor, poorly-mannered things people do and they're not aware of? I mentioned yawning with your mouth open. You just mentioned inviting people in at dinner time but not inviting them to your table. Are there other things that you folks can think of uh, that would have become so standard we're not aware of them but they're bad manners? I think for, for me, is it what people are in public, when they speak very loud, they have the feeling that, you know, to be heard, they have to be very loud, and, and they take the conversation everywhere, so they don't really worry if there's people around and if you have to listen to the conversation, and it's, it's anywhere, it's at the restaurant, it's at the public place, and, and I had this example again the other day, I was at the French consulate, and somebody, you know, they ask, have to ask the woman to leave the room, because she was taking her conversation over the phone, and, uh, and, and that's... That's, okay. That's really rude. All right, very good. Speaking loudly. Charles, do you have one? I, I think the, the speaking loudly uh, for the text, uh, for, for, tel for the cell phone is, is, I would agree, there. But for me, my biggest pet peeve is not being able to use um, eating utensils properly at the table. Mm -hmm. um, that, to me, is, is, is the biggest thing that shocks me when I'm sitting with people either socially or from a business perspective and to see the way that, that they conduct themselves. Okay, the I agree. I, I have my, my pet peeve is when someone finish their, finishes their soup and leaves the soup spoon in the soup bowl. That is just to be... Oh, I just, I just, oh. uh, and uh, um, Valentina, do you have one? Yes, for me is the cellular phone because when we are with people, our time is with that person or those many people. It's not for somebody else. So the capability of the phone to answer itself is there. There is an answering machine. That's why you have voicemail. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Turn so, it off. All right. I'm sorry, folks, but I'm going to. We have just a few seconds left. So quickly, your websites, each of you. So it's Charles. It's CharlesMcPherson.com. Okay. Biba. It's YourBusinessInStyle.com. Uh, YourBusinessInStyle.com. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Valentina. Valentina. I am Valentina Interiors and Designs, and my website is ValentinaDesigns.com. Wonderful. Folks, thank you. Will you come back for another show? There's so much more we need to talk about here. I look forward to it. Terrific. Yes. All right, everybody. You have just been hearing from Biba Padron, Valentina Sirasola, and Charles McPherson, who are all experts in the incorporation of proper manners to life and business. Panel, pinkies up. Thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. All righty. Bye-bye. Folks, Bye. coming up, my boomer.